What's up, y'all? I got a film to defeat, so let's get into this tea. I got my girl, your favorite paralegal, Cassandra. Okay? She about to break it down, this uh, Krishan situation. This video is an hour and 17 minutes. I'm not going to lie. We ain't going to make it the whole way. However, comma, she does have other videos that are a little shorter. So we're going to get the just of what we need. And she, uh, oh, feedback is welcome. I got you. John Rock's um, Oklahoma case history to. And I did speed it up some type of understanding and clarification as to why she was locked up. Um, if you have watched my previous video regarding um, her arrest, you would pretty much be caught up. But this is just to kind of go from the beginning to the end to kind of see how things played out and why things are happening the way that it is happening. Um, I'm seeing a lot of commentary with some misinformation and it is just as a paralegal who does this every day, you know, I just kind of have to sit back and let everybody else formulate their own opinion and kind of piece together the puzzles that they're trying to make. But uh, the purpose of my channel is to go over legal documents that I normally draft as paralegal to assist um, attorneys in criminal cases, family law cases, per personal injury cases. So I did want to bring my expertise. Uh, I am not in no way a lawyer. I do not practice law. I am just a paralegal in the legal field that um, that assists attorneys when it comes to these uh, litigation matter matters. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into um, Krishan Rock's Oklahoma case history. So for everybody who, you know, we already know that um, back in, I'm not sure when that was, 2021, 2000, no, it had to be 2021 where Krishan was caught in Oklahoma with um, Mary Jane in the car. Uh, I don't believe at that time Oklahoma was a, um, I don't believe that they legalized marijuana at that time. Uh, so being caught is a serious offense trust me i know not from my own experience but for my family that actually live in oklahoma so uh, oh and you know fam you got family in oklahoma oh god like i've said in previous lives that you know just because you get picked up this day this year does not mean that the state will bring charges well i'll take that back does not they'll file charges because you know you're arrested in your charge but they won't foul in Excuse the state me. until a couple of months later they have to build evidence so on and so forth so with uh Krishan rock's particular case this was filed as you can see the file date uh february 18 2022 get to my, my screen okay um so that's what we see here i'm sorry uh I'm not sure if I spoke about this yesterday or the day. Now, I've seen this paperwork. I have it, but I, I didn't know how to read it. Or, or That's a lie. I didn't know how to find what I wanted to find. So shout out to uh, Cassandra. Prior and y'all make sure y'all subscribe. Okay? Your favorite paralegal, Cassandra. Hell, let me subscribe. We just started. We just I just got to you for <laughs> but you, your fave paralegal Cassandra. Y'all tap in. But if we notice that as of right now, Prashan does not have an attorney for her Oklahoma case. That attorney withdrew. And I'm gonna show you guys the documents that were filed. He withdrew from her case. Um normally mm. when an attorney withdraw from a case, it could be various amounts of reasons, but they have to first file a motion and the court has to actually approve it. So just because they file a motion, that does not mean anything. It has to go before the judge. The judge has to look at circumstances and he states whether or not he's gonna grant that order okay so cassandra i need you on him cassandra you do you have um <laughs> hold on <laughs> do you have discord friend do you have discord cassandra uh, cassandra cassandra do you have discord i got a phone okay I ain't got my I ain't got my machine here. I gotta go get it out the office because we leaving the office. I might need your paralegal advice with the office. Okay, okay. Well, I can't necessarily put you on the phone without my equipment. So, all right. Well, I, I tell you what, Cassandra, you if hell if you can read this information, you you can absolutely download the app Discord. Okay, D I S C O R D. I need you to download that. Okay. Make you an account, and I need you to tell me your um five 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 in the chat, not your login name, but I need you to tell me your um username. So this I am assuming used to be her attorney, but as you can see, it is blank there. She does not currently have an attorney. These are all the parties that are in the case: the defendant, which is Sean Malone, your district attorney, the arresting officer, and the agency that that officer works for. Um, here events it just pretty much breaks down all the actions that has been taken in this case. Uh -huh. So beginning in uh, <clears throat> March 2nd, 2022, with the initial appearance, scrolling all the way down to the last transaction, which was on February 26th. But this really doesn't have anything to do well, with it. That's even better. The kids can show you how to do it. But this is what I am trying to get everybody to see. 
February 23rd, there was a bench warrant that was issued for failure to do community service. This bench warrant is still active. It has not gone anywhere. If you have tried to look up in a municipal court where you can look up, you know, uh, misdemeanor or the traffic traffic infractions, um, which are known as your Class C misdemeanors, your bench warrant is not going to be in that same system. So I get people are looking up and say, hey, I don't see a warrant. Where is it? You're looking in the wrong place. A bench warrant is issued once a motion or something has been filed in the court. The judge has reviewed everything and okay. he has signed off on an order. So this was issued by the court to say, hey, this person failed to do this order. We need to get to that person and bring them in. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you wanted to go look, you would have to ha actually go look in a, a different place than what you are normally going to look. So here, ah. this is the Oklahoma Department of Corrections. Okay. As you can see, here's for Sean, just a facility interstate probation out. But that means yes. is, and you'll see in a minute, that she was on probation and she asked for Oklahoma to transfer her probation to California. Yes. They can yes. do that because California and Oklahoma has an agreement. There are certain statutes that allow for, an, um, how can I say this, <clears throat> allows a defendant to, um, you know, if they live in one, another state to transfer their probation. But you have to meet certain stipulations in order to be granted that. That's just okay. like if your kid does not go to their home school, there are certain rules and stipulations that you have to abide by to ensure that your kid goes to that school and stays in that school. Okay. Otherwise, they have to go back to their home school. Right. Same thing with this uh, situation. <clears throat> so as you can see, Oklahoma Department of Corrections, this is the fugitive list. They had a warrant poster out for her and everything. Okay. Uh, um, and so here, right here, Absconder uh, Interstate Compact Probation, California. Once again. Okay, Cassandra, help me to understand. When, when they gave her this interstate probation, which first of all, it says it's listed as if she was granted that. So I don't understand that. But if she's listed to have interstate probation and they were supposed to transfer and all of that. What can you tell me what she was supposed to do to um, handle that to be able to get that interstate probation? That's number one. Number two, is it her fault that they didn't handle that? Because how is it like if I was a lawyer, I would be like, uh, it's literally on her paperwork that she has uh, been state uh, not reinstated, but um, she's on interstate compact probation. They granted it. All right. So if they did grant it, then why is it that? Well, clearly her ass wasn't going to court. But what I mean is if they did grant it, is it her fault that they didn't transfer the shit? Okay. It was transferred to Cali. She failed to go to the orientation check-in, provide documents. This is why we need Cassandra. Okay. All right. And that just simply means that because Krishan asked to be transferred to Cassandra, let me tell you something, girl. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get your information. I need you. I need you. Okay. We're going to, I'm going to get your information. We need, I need to holler at you on, on Instagram or your number or whatever. We're going to get it together. California, she had to abide by California rules um, in which California was responsible for, you know, and when I say responsible, Krishan basically had to check in with them. And she had to make sure that she do everything and abide by everything. So that way she would not violate um, the compact that they have, but also violate the order. So uh -huh. that is the, uh, the offender wanted poster um, that a lot of people. She's not a speed talker. I sped her up. Realize it's out there. So at June, and I said at <laughs> June 27, 2003, that is when they declared her a fugitive. Okay. Right, so June remember. 20, hold on. June 27, 2023. All right. And when did they when did they give her that probation? I'd have missed it. When did they give her put her on probation for this in general? I guess that was um hold hold the line. Oh, February twenty third. No, that was the bench warrant. When did she get granted the interstate probation? I want to know. California. Once again, that just simply means that three fifteen twenty twenty three to California. She. Okay. I was not expecting this channel to take off like this. Lord help me. Oh, ain't no problem, friend. That's my favorite thing to do. Just don't play with me. But I, I will take you off. Okay, take you to the king, not Jesus, but the king of YouTube. We can make some shake. To abide by basically compact that they have, but also violate the order. Do you know how many? We'll talk about it. So that is the uh, the offender wanted poster um, that a lot of people don't realize is out there. So. At June, and I said at June 27, 2003, that is when they declared her a fugitive. Okay. All right. So I want everybody to keep that in mind. Got you. Now, going back to 
Oklahoma, like I said, this bench warrant did not disappear. It has not gone anywhere. Why? Because if you see any other transactions, there's no motion to get rid of this bench warrant. There's no orders to get rid of this bench warrant. This is the last transaction on this court document, on this court docket. Okay. The la I thought the last one was the tax insert. Okay. I read court dockets every single day. If an attorney files something, it's going to be added to the court docket. If opposing counsel added something, it's going to be added to the court docket. If a pro se client who's not represented by anybody files something, it's going to be added to the court docket. If the clerks send out something, it's going to be added to the court. Cassandra, can you tell me when uh, the lawyer withdrew? Do you know that date? So this court docket has not been updated since February 26, 2024. Okay. okay. Her Oklahoma charges were felonies. I repeat, her Oklahoma charges were felonies. So because Krishan transferred to do her community service and check in in California, that does not change the, the type of charge. So it is still a felony. So when Krishan got locked up and she got booked, as you can see, fugitives. Okay. okay? Remember, we I showed you guys the, the warrant poster, the wanted poster. Right. She's considered a fugitive. Okay. Okay. Now going to her, what did it say? It was something that said felony. Everybody's like, well, why is it felony? There it is. Charge level. Yep, the yep. reason why it is felony is because this is regarding her Oklahoma violation. Well, that doesn't make sense. Um, Somebody said, dang, all her business. Y'all, it's public record. And, le and let me let me state that for the record. This is public record. Okay. The thing about this whole situation is a lot of people are just trashing the hell out this girl okay and quite frankly i want to know what's going on so i can know what the hell i'm talking about when i'm telling y'all what's going on but a lot of y'all i know i know i know i know you hate her you want to see her downfall and all of that okay it's actually some people out here that don't and you know want to get down to the bottom of it so we even know how to talk about it i mean who wants to just be talking and don't know what the hell going on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I'm so glad. Shout out to Cassandra, your fave paralegal underscore Cassandra. Y'all make sure y'all uh subscribe. She breaking it down. I love that for us today. So she got picked up in Cali because she violated her order and she has a bench warrant out for failing to do community service. Now, I thought uh cassandra that she got picked up in la because of the james uh Ch james charles because of the james situation james right is that not why i thought that's why she got picked up so are you hello oh, time out i'm confused and maybe i should keep listening but since you here i just feel as though i could talk to you and see, you got to type and all that. See, by this time, we could have been on the phone. I made another video correcting myself. Got it. All right. In California. Okay. It so happens. Sometimes we got to come back out and be like, my fault. I, I was confused. So when they're inputting that information into her booking, it's saying that this is what is associated. So hit two things. Fugitive. Where'd it go? Fugitive. Fugitives. That's one. Somebody just said, I don't understand the Krishan hate. Please explain it to me. I'm going to let you know right now, I ain't got no explanation for you. See, one thing about me, I'm not a hater. Never have been in my life, okay? And I do realize people make mistakes. Now, I'm going to talk my shit, okay? If you made a mistake, I'm going to talk about it. We all going to talk about it. Y'all talk. People talk about my mistakes. I got plenty of mistakes on YouTube. <laughs> Check it out. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately when you become a celebrity people talk about you some people really just dislike people i i, I feel as though it sometimes it's because um they would have done better with their position or they just don't like a person's aura or um you know krishan has done a lot of sh krishan has beat up several people you know what i'm saying um you know, she isn't the nicest to her fans. You know what I'm saying? So she she's done a lot of ne negative things and she's asked for a lot of negative things, a lot of negative feedback, unfortunately. But some people who are older, like myself, you kind of know, like, I've been there. I was 20. Up. I had a warrant. I keep telling y'all I had a warrant when I was 20. Now, did I have Krishan money? 
No, but just because they have money doesn't mean I'm about to come out and pay for this responsibility. She rather go buy a chain first. <laughs> then take care of the responsibility later. I'll come to the conclusion that Krishan is kind of like a, um, a, um, if it ain't, not if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but kind of out of sight, out of mind. One of my people brought that to my attention today. Kind of out of sight, out of mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't got to deal with that right now. I ain't, am I in jail? Are you bleeding? Did you die? You know what I'm saying? And no. So she like, I ain't got to deal with that shit right now. And I feel like it just kind of caught up to her. Not only that, she thought she could just go around punching people in the face when they pissed her off. As a 20 year old, you think you could just punch people in the face because you was probably punching people in the face in high school. But when you become an adult, it is illegal. All right. It becomes battery. <laughs> okay. But I don't, I don't understand the hate. I'm not here to understand the hate. That's why I try to give y'all my heart in the beginning all the time. I ain't the one. Okay. So if you think you're going to come here and I'm about to be bashing whoever, I don't. I will talk about what's going on. And if you done f***ed up, I'm going to say, come on, friend. You not, come on. You could have did better than that. You know what I'm saying? I will do that. All day, every day. And if they was in my face, I'd do the same thing. Whether we got to run them once or however. Yo, I'm going to tell you. That's it. So, I ain't got it in my heart to hate, though. Y'all ain't got time. I definitely had a warrant when I was in my 20s. And it was for driving while license revoked, if I ain't mistaken. And it was because I did not pay a ticket. So, I had got a ticket for whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I got a ticket for whatever reason. Right? I think I got a ticket because my um my license and registration wasn't up to date. Okay? <laughs> so my license and registration wasn't up to date. Boom. They pulled me over. The cop said I could still drive home, which they ain't supposed to do. They supposed to tow your car and all that, but see, he let me get away with it. So boom. And it was a cop that I was already cool with for whatever reason. So anyway, he let me drive home, but he told me to deal with it. Boom. I didn't. I'm just kind of like, ah, I figured it out. I figured it out. I figured it out. And then I went to the courthouse. God is always on my side. I went to the courthouse and normally I'll go to the, to the, not the clerk, but I'll go to the, um, I can't remember what it's called. Hell, I ain't been in trouble so long, but I went to talk to the people and they was busy. It was a line. So the lady that you normally pay, I went to holler at her and she said, come here and I'm like <laughs> what she was like get the f out of here you got a warrant how she could say it to me I understood I got the f out of there I called my um the lawyer that I had a lawyer for some reason the lawyer was like restrict the sh I'm gonna restrict the warrant but I need probably like a thousand dollars or something I gave them the money. They restricted the warrant. Then I had another court date. Then I had to handle all that. But I ain't want to go to jail. I just, I don't like jail. You know what I'm saying? So I had to deal with that. So, yeah, nigga, I'm, warrants, been on probation. Y'all, this ain't. So people trying to act like she, this is the craziest thing ever. It's not. And by the way, once again, she ain't killed nobody. She's not a drug lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She didn't rob a bank. Like, she didn't do anything dealing with the government. This girl has done 20 year old, but she don't take accountability. And, you know, she got to get her. That's all. And somebody got to be the example. I'm glad that LA picked up, but I wish she could go to Oklahoma. I wish Krishan could get extradited to Oklahoma. I do. Because she can deal with her shit. I wish she could, cause guess what? She get extradited to Oklahoma. She got to do whatever time she got going on, and boom, she pay them. Handle your business. It's over with. If she got to serve thirty days, she got to serve thirty days. If she got to serve sixty days, she got to serve sixty days. Or if I was Krishan, I'd tell him I pay him double. If you got a bag like that, I'm doubling the bag. <laughs> How much? 20,000, I give you 60, nigga. I will give y'all 60,000 here, please. 
I ain't got no lawyer. I will give y'all 60000 right now. Sometimes that might bite you in the ass. <laughs> but sometimes, depending on the, the state and all that, they be needing that money for real. Believe it or not, they be, leaving, they be needing that money. So I just wanted to give y'all that breakdown right quick. That was triple. I know it was triple, but I just wanted y'all to know. I had to put that out there. <laughs> Double, triple, whatever. So that's that's what I have to say. Um, charge a little felony. Go here. Wanted. Uh, her name is your fave paralegal Cassandra. If you would like to go watch this video without me, please click off this video. And go go watch it with Cassandra, okay? Because I'm gonna talk on my channel. All right, that's another thing. I, let, I know a lot of y'all knew. Let me holler at you right quick. Come on, I'm gonna talk on my channel. That's what a reaction is. Got you? Y'all got what I'm saying? A reaction is to speak. So, if you want to watch her her video though, somebody slide her link right quick. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give y'all the link. Let me put it in my pen comment. Because all y'all need to subscribe. Let me put this in the pinned comment. Oh, yeah. When, when y'all, y'all, I'm a Leo. You listen, y'all better, y'all better tap in. Um, and I like to remind y'all that I'm a Leo because y'all, after I tell you that, you should know I ain't even the one to even play with like that. Your, your faith paralegal underscore Cassandra uh, now if you would like to go check it out on her channel as you should without any commentary from me that video right there in the pen comment bam did I pin it did I pin it I pinned it y'all go tap in go subscribe make sure you handle all your business but I'm going to continue to talk on my own. Sh All right. Let's do it. Go here. The felony. So I want everybody to stay with me. All right. So now we're going to get to the docket because I want everybody to understand how we got to this point. Okay. I know we've been on social media. Cassandra, this is what I really wasn't understanding. I didn't understand none of these fees. A lot of blogs, posting, commentating, giving their two cents. But I want it to make sense so you guys can understand this. First thing first right. was the case being actually filed. So this is the state filing this complaint against Krishan Rock regarding the felony charges so they could start the litigation process. Okay. What does that entail? I'm going to help you guys see this. Um, I didn't click on the wrong one. Let's click on this one. Okay. All right. So here is when the okay. case first got submitted. So it was just like, okay, what are we filing a lawsuit for? Mm -hmm. So this is the information about her charges. Count one was the unlawful possession of controlled drug marijuana uh -huh. with intent to distribute. I hate to go on this here internet on Instagram and just people running with, oh, she had a controlled substance, blase, blase, blase. But did you even take the time to go look at the court documents to see that it was not anything other than Mary Jane? I'm going to let you know right now that they didn't, friend. They didn't. They didn't. Um, Honestly... I don't think a lot of people even know that this was about marijuana. I, I think that they think it's about uh, her stealing blue face car. I'm not even going to lie. I really think that's what they think that this is about. And it's not. That's how it was. <laughs> now, I don't even know it's about the gas. It's different. It's how the statues are set up. So it's it, Mary Jane falls under that control drug, not control substance, but control drug. Talk about so it. Count one said that she pretty much willingly, knowingly, unlawfully, wrongly committed the crimes of count one unlawful possession of controlled drug marijuana with intent to dis distribute. So we already know it's probably in a little baggie. All right. Um, it was classified as schedule one in the uniform control dangerous substance act of Oklahoma located I 44, um, 144 WRTP eastbound toll gate. So that is where she was caught. So if anybody know Oklahoma, they got quite a few toll rolls on I 44. And so that's where she was caught. Now she okay. was speeding through there. That's probably how she got caught. Um, uh, uh, Got pulled over. Count two was possession of CDS without tax stamp affixed, which is also a felony. What is um, that? I don't know what that is. So yeah, and when it says a tax stamp, um, I have to do some more research because I'm not sure if this is when Oklahoma was actually, um, if 
Mary Jane was legalized because if it was and she got caught with this, that's why she got charged. Otherwise, if she had a medical marijuana card, <laughs> and, oh yeah, it's crazy because I know a few people got got a, a medical card, and I'm like, ain't that right with you? Why you have a medical card? But that's me. I got put on probation for CBD. C B D. Okay, literally. Neither here nor there. But yeah, so this could be the reason why she was charged with this because she didn't have that medical card. And that's why. So this was filed, as you can see, February 18th, 2022. Okay, mm -hmm. here is uh, the citation that was given and they have to file all that good stuff with the court. All right, everybody caught up with me so far. I'm all right, it. so that's 18. So these are all the transactions. Um, that's the courthouse closing for bad weathers on the 23rd, incarceration sheets, appearance bond. Uh, all right, so I ain't gonna lie, she lucky she didn't get hit with a trafficking charge. I don't even know how much she had, but that would give them every reason to put a damn trafficking charge on there. March 2nd, 2022. If you can read this, defendant was present with attorney Clint Ward. Her case was then reset to April 29th at 9 a.m. So I'm just gonna click on it so we can kind of go over these documents. So that's the whole point. This is legal top so you guys can get the information correctly. Uh, yeah, so this is all that is pretty much. <clears throat> What it showed on the docket. So it's just saying that Krishan was present with her attorney, Clint Ward, and they reset the hearing to April 29th. All right. So we'll go here to the docket. Um, here's Krishan Malone, the judge presiding. Da 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 da. Um, now hold up. It says not present. Okay. So I'm assuming Krishan wasn't present, but the attorney was present, and it says warrant shall issue for failure to appear. So here, Krishan was present with her attorney. The case was reset. Here comes 429. Krishan was not present, but the attorney was present, and so the issue got a bench warrant. What? Krishan, you show. And it says, warrant shall issue for failure to appear. So here, Krishan was present with her attorney. The case was reset. Here comes 429. Krishan was not present, but the attorney was present. And so they issued out a bench warrant. So this is why the lawyer withdrew. You don't have the lawyer show up without you. Come on, Krishan. And tripped. I'll pull up that document so everybody can see. She so yeah, tripped. when you fail to appear, that's what constitutes a bench warrant. All right. So that's all this is right here. It's just, so instead of that we have the first the round. I can just read the docket. So here's the notes. So she had a bench warrant that was issued out on the 29th because she failed to appear. As you can see, here's the second transaction on the docket. All right. Yes. May 4th, defendant not present. Defendant detained in a different state. I'm pretty sure that's what it says anyway. Now, I don't, I cannot remember. I have to look and see when she was detained. All right. So 5 4, order and judgment of a uh, forfeiture filed and certified copy. All right. So the judge signed off on an order. On May 4th. All right. So remember, warrant was issued. Now, an order was sent out on the 4th of May. So on 429th, the above cause came on a hearing, came for hearing according to regular assignment of the docket of this court. The court finds that the above named defendant having heretofore been charged with the crime of charge with the crime of count one, possession of CDS with the intent of dis distribute felony. Remember, it was Mary Jane. And then count two, possession of CDS without affixing the tax stamp. And having been committed to bail in the amount of $50,000, was released on appearance bond executed by Mr. James Michael he Hayburn, a licensed bondsman and if applicable to his insurer, Brad Anderson. Said bond conditioned as provided by law for the appearance and said defendant before the court as required. And the court having ordered said defendant to appear on April, yeah, April 29, 2022. And said defendant being called three times in open court without sufficient excuse, failed to appear before the court as ordered. The court further finds that the said bondsman had due and legal notice as provided by law of the required appearance of said defendant. The court further finds that the conditions of said appearance bond have been broken by both defendant and said bondsman and that an order and judgment uh, forfeiture shall be entered. So you guys already how it was broken by the bondsman too. You know that when you go to jail, you bail out, you get a bondsman, right? Yes. It's, bondsman also have to have a, because uh, they're the one who's putting up the money. So they have to stay on the defendant and say, hey, here's your court date. This is what you right. do. Blase, blase, blase. Okay. So pretty much that's not what happened here. And then the judge uh, entered this order and judgment for forfeiture. Um, it goes on to say that it is therefore ordered a, ju a judge and decreed by the court that the appearance bond of said defendant be, and the same is hereby declared and is ordered uh, forfeited to the state of Oklahoma, and the amount of said bond is ordered paid to the clerk of the court. It is further ordered and a judge and decreed that the court clerk shall immediately mail a copy of this order and judgment of forfeiture to the bondsman and if applicable to his insurer. The bondsman is hereby directed to deposit with the court clerk the face amount of said for uh, forfeited bond. $50,000. So because Krishan did not show up in court, now the bondsman has to pay the court. That's why it's like collateral. That's why people go to the bondsman, you pay your 10%, and they on your behind saying, hey, you need to get the court. Because if you don't get the court, we got to be responsible for paying the court. All right, so that's what that order is. So Krishan failed to appear on the 29th of April, 2022. So on the 5th of, I'm sorry, the 4th of May of 2022, the judge signed off on an order to forfeit, and the bonds company had to end up paying the clerk of court. What? So... Cassandra, uh, Krishan still owe the bondsman fifty thousand. 
So we're going down, going down. So they have to mail it, certified mail return receipt, which means that they have to wait for the green card to come back and what you did on the 20th. Um, and then on the 27th, it says bench warrant return FTA file, Sheriff Craig, and it says arrested. 531-2022, incarceration, incarceration sheet. I can't talk. No, it's time to go to bed. Um, then on 531, here we have an appearance bond. So we're going to click on that and go through that. So 27th says she was arrested. Sorry for my computer going a little bit slow tonight. That's all right. All right, so appearance bond. Here we have the state versus Krishan Malone, known all by these, pre uh, by these presents that we, the above name defendant as principal and undersigned Stephen Fulton. Fletcher, the U.S. Fire Insurance Company. So this is pretty much a bond in the sum of, what, $100,000. Um, and so um, here's our girl's signature right there. So this is another bond company. All right. So she was detained and she bonded out again just with a different bond uh, company. All right. So bench warrant. She was arrested on the 27th, 31st. Here we have the appearance bond. Here's her new bondsman's company. All right. So that was taken care of. They doubled the bond amount when she got the second bondsman. The first bond was 50K and the second one doubled. So she owed him 150K. Or is my math not mathing? So not only do she got to deal with the law. She got to deal with the bail bondsman too. Because if that's the case. Why didn't they put out a... um? Y'all know the, the the bail bondsman who send out people to get the people to get their money. <laughs> I can't think of what it's called. Well, 100K, I said it wrong. Okay. So she owed him 100K too. So who who the people that that uh that the bail bondsman sent out? Bounty hunters. So why hasn't why hasn't a bounty not a bounty been put on Krishan's head, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Why that? Why haven't they sent out a, bo a bounty hunter? You won't know. You ain't the damn bail bondsman. Okay. Then six one, uh, defendant was present. So here, June the first, two thousand twenty-two, she was present, and then the case was set for August nineteenth, two thousand twenty-two. Come around August nineteenth, it says defendant <laughs> was fault. present. Just asking uh, you weird ass questions and shit. Ward, but the attorney was out of town, but still representing the case. Therefore, they reset it to October seventh, two thousand twenty-two. So here's October seventh. Uh, defendant was present with her attorney defendants all right so i'm gonna have to wrap this video up because i don't want it to be an hour long um on the channel so also let me let y'all know i'm recording a video as i'm reacting on live so let me end my video uh appreciate y'all for watching we gonna go to the next video with this one we know now that krishan didn't pay the bounty jesus christ she didn't pay the bail bondsman. <sighs> she didn't pay the bail bondsman and she let the lawyer go to court on her behalf without her. And whatever else. <laughs> Let's go to the next video.